Chairman, thank you to uh, all the witnesses on our panel for coming today and testifying. Um, I want to start with Mr. Vitiello real quick. Uh, sir, you and I were talking about similar things. You, you called it a, a security system. I was talking about overlapping deterrence. Either way, it's really the same thing, right? It's just multiple overlapping deterrents that work in conjunction to create the most security possible for whatever uh, institution we're talking about, whether it's a country, a prison, a school, right? I agree with you. And you were, how long were you in the Border Patrol, sir? Was it 33 years? I wore the uniform for 33 years, and I was in ICE for the la well, almost the last year I was in. Government. And you were a chief, is that correct, Mr. I was, I was a chief in two locations uh, on our, our northern border and then the Rio Grande Valley in Texas, and then I was chief at headquarters for a time. Sir, knowing what you know about border security, what, what does it make you think when you sit in this chamber and you hear individuals attacking one part of that security system or one of those deterrents, like the wall? It's, it's a little bit frustrating. We should be agnostic about whether walls work or not. It's not a partisan issue. Walls work. Everybody that's been in the border patrol for more than five minutes recognizes it's easier to control a territory on the border when you have infrastructure that goes along with it. And not just wall. We talked about the comprehensive nature of it. And I was thinking through this just a couple of minutes ago. We often talk in this chamber and others in this building about comprehensive immigration reform. Let's talk about comprehensive border security which talks about our foreign relations overseas, which talks about what Mexico and Canada can do for us to help secure our border. Let's talk about what the state and locals can do and what communities can be active and, and talk about. And then you have, to have, you have to have physical infrastructure if you wanna be successful, especially in the urban areas. Thank you, sir. I wanna transfer real quick uh, to uh, Doc Tenorio. Doc, thank you for coming. I also wanna say thank you for your service. It must, you know, I was listening to your testimony, it must be really hard to watch, you know, somebody, a young kid or even a mom or a dad come in to your emergency room or your hospital and see a leg broken or a stress fracture, a spinal injury or a TBI. Would, is it pretty, pretty tough to watch that, sir? Uh, yes, it is. And uh, thank, you, thank you for the comment. Yeah. Yes, sir. Doc, I wanted to ask you, um, you know, because I, I noticed you getting to, you're getting teared up, I can tell that, you know, what, witnessing these injuries really affect you. But I did want to know, Doc, have you ever seen an American who's overdosed on fentanyl? Have you ever had to treat one of those? Uh, I have not had to treat one of those as of uh, today, no. How about any of your colleagues? Any of your colleagues ever have to treat anybody that's overdosed on fentanyl? Uh, yes, they have. I haven't spoken to them about the specifics and what the experience is like, though. Okay. Doc, do you know how many Americans every day or I should say every year dying of fentanyl in the U.S.? No, I do not. Okay, it's about 70,000 right now. Gentlemen, yield. Yes, go ahead, sir. I just want to say, Mr. Crane, totally agree with you in the fentanyl challenge, and that's why we're trying to figure out the priorities in my mind right now. If we want to keep fentanyl out, you go work on make sure our ports of entry are much more secure because that's where 90% of the problem is. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank I, you. Appreci I appreciate it. I yield back, take my, my time. Um, the reason I'm pointing it out, uh, Mr. Ranking Member, is because obviously you, you guys called him here to talk about the injuries that he's witnessed from the extended height of our walls, right? Um, but I want to point out, again, this is the Homeland Security Committee. Our primary job in this committee is to make sure that our Homeland Security units have the necessary resources, funding, and equipment to make sure that Americans are safe. So, you know, um, Doc was talking about 16 people that he, he knows of that have died because they fell off that wall. We, that's horrible. That's horrible, Doc. But since the Biden administration took office, Doc, do you have any idea how many Americans have died because of fentanyl? I just gave you the one year number. Any idea how many have died in the three years? That, I cannot speak to that now. 300,000, Doc. How would you like to treat one of those individuals? How would you like to break the news to those family members that, and I know, you, I know you're a man, you have a heart, I could, I could see that. But do we, I'm asking, do we care about those individuals as well? Absolutely, as a physician, I took an oath to take care of every patient that comes to our hospital and I treat every patient the same. And, and I appreciate that, Doc, I, I think that's great. The last thing I wanna say is Mr. Johnson, how does it make you feel when you hear politicians that you know 
have camera systems, lock doors, walls, security system, and often armed personnel sit here and talk about how walls don't work. Do you think that they might change their tune a little bit, Mr. Johnson, if they lived at your ranch? I think that's a, a big issue is nobody truly knows what's going on on the border. The ports of entry, there's more assets allocated there than there are in between the ports of entry. I know that from a professional career as a border patrol agent versus my point of view as a stakeholder now. And I would like to take this time to oppor the opportunity to, to invite any member of this committee to come down to my ranch and I will show you firsthand what we are dealing with. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. I yield back.